numbers 6 through 8 uh, participated is shown in the table. So notice here, 7.3% uh, participated in no activities, 11.7% uh, participated in one activity, and so on. And it says, um, uh, let x represent a discrete random variable representing the number of school activities in which at least one parent of a child in grades 6 through 8 participated in 1997. So in part 8, it says um, compute p of 3 and interpret, and then compute the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3 and interpret. Now notice, we're given these uh, probabilities in terms of percentages here, that's quite all right. If you'd like to change those uh, to uh, decimals, that's certainly not, nothing wrong with that either. The first one would be, what, 0 0.073, the next one would be 0 0.117, and so on. So, so we could do that if we felt like it. All right. So let's go ahead and find a solution for that now. So for part A, we want the probability that our random variable x is equal to 3. We can just write p of 3 uh, for that if we'd like. Well, from the table, it doesn't get much easier than this. If we simply take a look at the table there, the value at 3 is 32.2. So we can say 33 is 32.2%. So interpreting that solution, so this means that 32.2% of the students were in three activities. All right, now let's look at part B. Here we want the probability that our random variable x is greater than or equal to 3. Now notice we really have to write in our random variable and the inequality sign because it's not a simple equality here. So think what we need in this case. We need p of 3 plus p of 4. That's all, all further up they go. Let's see, p of 3, that's 32.2%, plus p of 4 which is 23%. So if we add those two parts together, um, we end up with 55.2%. So let's go ahead and interpret that now. So interpret the solution. This means that about half, a little over half, right? 55.2% of the students participated in three or more activities. All right. So that's how we, we compute the probability at a single point, given a probability distribution. And also how we um, compute the probability between two points. This one was somewhat open-ended in part B. But remember, the table stopped at 4, so we could just stop right there. All right. Now, um, let's, let's move along and talk about one way we can construct uh, probability distributions. You saw first we could just be given a probability mass function. Another way is to simply use frequencies and compute the relative frequency. And that also results in a probability distribution. So let's take a look at one of those now. Um, it says here the number of defective blue genes discovered after inspection at the Saxworth Company is shown in the table. And you see those numbers uh, listed there in slide number 9. So um, what we want to do is to um, let's let x be a discrete random variable where x represents the number of inspections complete, completed. First, we want to construct a probability distribution for the data, and then compute p of 2 and interpret what that is. OK. So if you, if you remember the table that we have here, first, what we want to do is to add up the total number of defects 
and then we'll divide each one of the defects by that total, and that'll give us a relative um, that'll give us a relative frequency, which we can use for a probability here. So over here for x, we have the number of inspections. There are one, two, three, and four. And if we add up all of the frequencies, in this case, that's 1,500 plus 800 plus 200 plus 50. So if we add all of those up, we get 2,250. Now let's use our calculator to help us compute these probabilities now. So um, on the calculator, we'll hit the Stat button and go to Edit. And I'll clear out some data that I have in here. And then first, in, in, in list one, let's go ahead and put in the values of, of our discrete random variable. That's, that, those would be 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so then in the right-hand column, think of what we want to do, is we want to take each value in the table and then divide it by 2,250. So there's our first probability there. That looks like it's, uh, what, 0.6, uh, two-thirds, I guess. And then in the second one, let's just check that. That was 1,500 divided by 2,250. And then in the second value, we want to take uh, 800 and then divide that by 2,250. And then 200 is the next number of defects. Divide that by the total, 2,250. And then finally, with four defects, there are only 50 of those. So we divide that by our total. And we get about, what, 2% uh, there. All right. So we can go ahead and put these values um, into our into our table, and so we could round those off to uh, the nearest whole number if we'd like. So let's go ahead and do that. So the probability values would be, oh, we'll call them 0 0.67, 0 0.36, 0 0.09, and 0 0.02. All right. So there's part A, was to develop this probability distribution from this empirical data. And in part B, it says to compute the probability that x is 2, we'll just call that p of 2, and interpret. So we can just read right off the graph on this, can't we? There it is right there. And so it looks like it's going to be 0.36, so let's interpret that. So this means... Um, there is a 36% probability that there will be um, two defects in the genes. All right. So there's our there's how we can take a uh, empirical data and use that to compute uh, uh, a, a, a probability distribution. So in this, in this section, we want to 